In Mammoth Lakes, California, the bears are back in town. Boy, you're huge. They're not only huge, they're hungry. He's eating a ton of grass. With tourists flooding into the area as fast as the bears. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's a bear there. Collisions are imminent. It's up to one man to keep bears and people yeah. safe from each other. Go, man, go. There's a golfer right there. Steve Searles. One on one. Nobody knows the bears like he does. OK. Get out of here. This season, a massive bear challenges Steve. Knock it off. Enough of that. Another leaves him shaken to the core. I got blood on my glasses. And for the first time, one wrong move puts Steve in a place he's never been. No! Black bears are some of the most imposing creatures on the planet. They can tear the door off your car and not even break a sweat. A big male can weigh 600 pounds and still outrun the fastest man on Earth. He could sprint probably at 25 to 30 miles per hour. They can scale trees, swim great distances, and sniff out food three miles away. Black bears can smell through a cooler that's locked inside of a car that's parked inside of a garage. In Mammoth Lakes, it's easy for bears to find food. There's fish and lush vegetation. It's a wild bear paradise, with one exception. They must share the space with more than a million tourists a year. The potential for conflict is great. It's Steve Searle's job to keep things in check. Get out of here! You bad bear, get! So as far as the job goes, I'm a really lucky guy, and I have a unique job. But it does, it's just, you know, it's the yin and yang of life. And um, I have to be the judge, the jury, and sometimes the executioner. Don't like the third one. And so it's best to do a lot more of the other two. The more proactive I am rather than reactive, uh, the better results we get. So I work a lot of hours, and I'm out here every day. Steve Searles came into the picture as a hunter originally who knew how to track. And when we began to have wildlife issues, the chief of police enlisted Steve's assistance to help control the wildlife. Go on. You know better than this. And as a self-taught professional, he has become very well educated in our local bears' behaviors and how to Come condition on. them and use techniques in controlling Go their on. aggression to help them realize that human beings probably are not the best people to be around. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Steve's official title is Wildlife Patrol Officer, but he's better known as the Bear Whisperer. For probably the last 15 years, I have um, tried to vocalize with bears. I've been too embarrassed to share that. I do it privately, and some bears, uh, when they see me coming, they will start vocalizing. Other bears are a lot quieter. Um, just through trial and error, I just um, tried different techniques uh, to make my job easier. Oh, I hear ya. I would describe Steve as a completely unique personality. He's uh, intense at the same time as he can be fairly laid back. All right, you can come over here. He's dedicated his life to hanging out with the bears and getting to know them and trying to understand them. Is it a brown bear? It's, it's a, a black bear. So how old do you think that cub is? It is. This year? It was born in February. Over the past 15 years, Steve has developed an unprecedented program to keep people and bears apart. It begins with two rules for the bears. The first, be respectful of people. You go on. Bears that aren't afraid of people, it'll get them killed. And so, um, you know, running bears off is a part of my job. Go on, it'll just make them live longer. Rule number two, don't scare people. Knock it off. 
We know statistically that people are rarely, if ever, hurt or um, killed by a bear. 100,000 bears have been killed by people. There's just no denying the numbers that the bear's gonna end up on the short end of the stick every time. What are you doing? Get out of there. Get out. I have the psychological hand on them, and even though I, I weigh nothing in comparison, they believe I'm the biggest, baddest bear in town. But sometimes the bears are willing to battle Steve for dominance. Enough. Shame on you. A bear's gonna huff at me, and he's in trouble with me. I'm gonna huff right back. I don't back down. And when necessary, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques to teach the bears right from wrong. Get out of here. Go on, get. Get out of here. Get. I love bears, but um, it's cruel to be kind. They need to learn that people are mean. They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And so I'd rather be mean to them professionally than have them die. Steve is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He's trained all of our officers on, on his techniques and strategies on dealing with bears, and we work very well hand in hand with him. Hopefully, he's going to move out of there slowly, and I'm going to back you up with non lethal. But most of the time, Steve works alone. Get in there. Go on. You stay in there until it's dark. Go on now. Get in there. Go on in there. Go on. For people that see me working with bears or think that. I'm nutty or crazy or it's a dangerous situation. But when I'm at your home or your city, that's how I feel too. I'm scared of the cities. Um, my safest place I could be is with the bears. But a bear is still a wild animal, and anything is possible. Wildlife one, looking for fifteen. Go for wildlife one, fifteen. Got to report a bear over on Pine Road. Don't be that. I'm in the area. Uh, the neighbors noticed a, a large bear building a den uh, underneath this driveway, and um, the people that were renting the home uh, called me to uh, come and take a look. Steve films as many bears as he can to identify, study, and better manage them. There's his den for the last five months. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. Just taking a look. Boy, you're huge. This is the largest bear Steve has ever seen. It's springtime. You can't stand her here anymore. We had a long, successful winter. Sometimes I'm called for inappropriate uh, den sites. If it's too close to children or the school, we need to move the bear along and let him know that it's just not a good place for him. All right. Black bears are solitary animals. If their dens are exposed, they usually abandon them. All right. You're feeling kind of anxious. But this enormous bear is agitated. Mm, you're OK. And even though there's an opening on the opposite side, he doesn't make a move to leave. <laughs> to make sure the bear isn't sick or injured, Steve needs to get a better look. My eyes are limited compared to his, and so uh, I always carry a flashlight to try to uh, light bears up. On camera, I'll catch details that I can't catch in the moment. All right. Seem to offend the bear. All right. All right. The bear's threatening move is known as a bluff charge. Oh, easy. Bears bluff charging is something that should be respected but try to understand that it's just their way of letting a human being know, can All you right. please back up and give me some space? All right. OK, OK. All right, all right. If you aren't frightened when a bear bluff charges, you're dead or drunk. It's lonely to anybody. I might have a high tolerance for bears. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. Ooh. Ooh. OK. He was uh, mooing and clapping and, and um, huffing. OK, OK. He's uh, saying, I'd really like you to give me some room. I've been under here for five months without anyone bothering me. Now you're in my face. You have that silly flashlight. And um, would you back off and, and let me sleep? I guess I wasn't listening as well as I should. 
Steve wants to move the bear out and on his way, but it's a delicate situation. I thought he would take the other way out. Go back. Not hurting you. Knock it off. No! No! Stop it! Knock it off! No! Go on! You stop it! You bad bear! Don't see that every day. Oh my gosh. That's a no bear. Holy In the aftermath, you could see that the bear couldn't fit out the other exit of the den. I thought he could. You gotta give bears their room. Uh, when he came out, he had me uh, hemmed in in the corner right here. I uh, hear my uh, vocal commands telling him to no, no, back up, hands above my head, yelling at him. And uh, he responded and moved on down the hill. I learn every day things that I don't know, the bear will teach me. And so um, this was a classic example of me yeah. learning. And uh, the bear was giving me the education. Wow. When Steve returns the next day, he finds Max back under the house. We brought a police officer over. He shot rounds from up above us. Well, I brought the bear out from the other way, and we plugged him in the ass right here. All right, all right. When it comes to personality or habits, every bear and mammoth is different. Steve makes it his business to know where they are and what they're up to. Part of my job every day is to do like a paper route. And uh, during that paper route, uh, some of those man-made den sites or daybed sites are on my list and I check them every day. You're OK. I'm just going to take your picture. The daily rounds help Steve keep track of the bears in town. For more than a decade, he's been studying and documenting them. Year after year, many of the same bears return. There he is, that's Ace. Hello. Including Ace, a bear Steve spent lots of time teaching how to get along. This bear was going into homes and uh, became an issue. He's doing great. He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call all last year and all so far this year. Who's not so little anymore. Whoa. Ugly bear who keeps himself out of trouble. The old bear half knows. Boy, you look good. You look good, pal. And one of Steve's most stubborn bears. Hello. Is that you, one of you? The bears are always in the shadows, and as much time as I spend with them, it's still hard to determine one from the other. Under the darkness or the canopy of the forest, it's sometimes hard for my eyes to adjust and see. Now I can see clearly. What is you? It's one ear. You're looking a little tore up, but not too bad. Steve gives each of the older bears names. Bears are only named for their physical characteristics. I don't name them Bob or Joe or Susie. I name them uh, uh, one ear or half nose or blacky, browny, blondy. Uh, names that I can uh, help remember my uh, bears I'm working with this year. One ear, I've known them for. Jeez, maybe over 10 years. He knows how to get along with people and how to stay out of trouble. But there was a time when Steve and One Ear were at odds. Hey, One Ear, stop get it! Get down there. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. No, One Ear! Get back. Whoa. Go back now. After countless run-ins, the old bear has finally learned to play by Steve's rules. Do the bears remember who I am? Probably better than I remember them. They have wonderful memories. Black bears are extremely smart. They're known for their ability to communicate, cooperate, and grasp simple concepts. What a nice bear. He continues to just move on out of our way and uh, give us 
uh, our space where it should be the other way. And this is one of the few bears that's still alive that I started the original program with. You don't get this old by being stupid, and so he's a very intelligent bear. Hello. One of the most important parts of Steve's job is keeping the bears away from crowds, especially during the height of the tourist season. I'm going to come up there and, and uh, bring up an officer in just a little bit. A large cinnamon-colored bear has been spotted inside a culvert too close to a busy arts festival. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's a bear there. They have concerns about it staying the day here and likely going to ask the bear to leave. That would just be a bear near the art festival, and I might use a unit over here for a few minutes. With so many people all around, Steve calls for backup. The lady who's running the event, she's concerned with the bear sleeping under the road and wants it removed. The uh, exit of the covert is that concrete buttress Where right there. Where does it come out? Over here. Right there uh, on the other side of the street. And the bear is sleeping about 30 feet in. And it is um, that concrete spillway is where the bear is going to predictably come out. The least offensive thing I think I could do to the bear to drive him out is touch off it to flash bangs. It's just a, a, a very simple device. Um, flare gun is what it basically is for moving on wildlife. It's all uh, just a helpful, non-lethal tool. Just uh, startles the bear, lets him know that he needs to move on. The officer loads his rifle with non-lethal rounds in case the bear runs into the crowd instead of away from it. Steve went to one side of the culvert, and I went to the other side of the culvert and stood up on the roadway so where I can see the bear actually exit. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm going to torch off two. They won't touch him. Uh, the percussion is going to drive him out. Go on now. You got to go. When Steve shot the flashbang, the bear went through the culvert out towards the golf course. And I was in position to fire a less lethal round and scare the bear if the bear was to come back towards the roadway. He's right there, bro. Go on now. Get in there. Get in there now. Go on, get in there. There he goes. There he goes. So you leave it to the professional. Shut up. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks for your help, Dan. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Bear went the right direction, didn't bother the people, knew he had to leave, and uh, we're on to the next call. Mammoth Lakes is tucked into the forest and surrounded by green belts. It gives the black bears plenty of room to den. Here in the forest under the canopy, the bears come to stage or put in bear beds. Um, these are great examples of that. Um, you could see that it's the, a rotted, deteriorated log. And during the heat of the day, um, this material stays cooler than uh, the normal dirt or the duff. I'm about 6'4 barefoot and 180 pounds. And just to give you some kind of uh, scale for the size of the bed, uh, when I walk up on them, you know, they're oftentimes asleep or have their pads up in the air if they want to be cooling. Um, they're crimped over and, you know, more in a huddled fetal position if they want to um, keep body heat. They are diggers by profession. Um, they build them just about the size of their body. We can see two front pad prints where the bear was probably laying on his tummy. Um, it was a little bit uh, rocky for him or had too many pine cones in it, and so he didn't use it for long. But we can see where a bear was trying the bed out, kind of like the fairy tale. You know, there's flowers, water, trees, um, everything you need to uh, be happy as a black bear. But they also like their privacy. They often seek out hidden spaces. Model 1, Wallace 197. And sometimes they end up where they shouldn't. That's when Steve has to respond. We're in a really neat part of town. Um, a lot of these homes aren't lived in. At this one, a bear has moved in beneath the hot tub. Hey, big guy. No, it's cold out, huh? 
It's nice and warm under there. He's sleeping under there today. But there's a problem. The bear's noises have frightened one of the grounds workers. Mm. You're okay. Mm. Hi, pal. Maybe a four-year-old, maybe a little bit older male. He's just kicking it. The first thing Steve wants to do is identify the bear. He has no chest markings, no breastplate. He has no uh, torn ears, no scars. Not that big a bear, but not too small either. Uh, but he hasn't garnered a name, but what a lovely bear. I think that bears are like people. Some of them, some of them are more standoffish, some are more easygoing. It's a good trait to have as a bear. To be very docile and afraid of people, that's a good trait too. A bear is not a bear is a bear. Uh, they uh, come in all different varieties of um, their attitudes towards people and humans. But this is still a wild animal, and the bear is not allowed to stay under the porch after scaring someone. Those are the rules. You gotta come out. You can't stay here anymore. You scared the jacuzzi guy. Come on. Go back in the woods. Let's go. Out. OK. After failing to drive the bear out with noise, Steve resorts to pepper spray. <coughs> this form of non-lethal assaults the bear's senses, but it completely wears off within 8 to 10 minutes. The only lasting effect is the memory which can save the bear later from getting into another dangerous situation with people. Come on, out! Get out! All right, all right, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You're all right. It's just showing submission by being in the tree. I, I don't have a single documented case of him doing anything wrong in town and he was just uh, sleeping in the wrong spot, that's all. And so uh, what's done is done. I don't think he holds any hard feelings. I don't hold any hard feelings, and he'll go about his day, and I'll go about mine. That kind of live and let live attitude is something Steve tries to cultivate with the bears, as long as they stay out of trouble. He loves just spending time with the bears. They calm him down. He's, he's got, Steve's got a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, when he's frustrated or upset about something, he'll, he'll just take off and, you know, he'll go and be, be with the bear. <coughs> he's picked up a few, few traits. <laughs> <coughs> Can you show me 10 Steve's known some of the older bears more than a decade and has become friendly with a few of them. Hey, buddy. What are you doing in there? I love you, sincere old bear. One of Steve's longtime favorites is named Half Nose. He has been scra uh, scrapping all of his life. And so, like many of the old bears, he carries several scars from uh, that. Poor nose is bit right off. And he was in a fight with a bear named Arthur, and uh, Arthur bit the end of his nose off. And so he just has half of a nose, and thus the name Half Nose. What? Did I surprise you? Me and this bear go way, way back. I've been with this bear hundreds of hours, and so we've had good times and bad times together, but it just thrills me uh, that we're here with this bear right now. All right, all right. A black bear can live into its 20s. A big part of Steve's job is to make sure the bears in town are okay. It looks like this old bear is not in good health. Steve uses a special camera to get a closer look. The... Eye is weeping pretty bad, but now that I can see his teeth, he's got no teeth left. I'm not going to put this bear down, but that is a messed up deal right there. All right, I hear you. 
I didn't know his teeth were that bad. They're yeah. just nubs. He has the uh, both lower racks, but they're just like quarter inch nubs. And the front two canines, one is snapped off and black and infected. I could see why you're moaning, big guy. This guy would be, you know, comparable to a 90 year old man. He's just about out of tools. Mm. Their teeth are very similar to humans, and their their feet, depending on their feeding patterns and what they've been eating, their teeth can actually rot out, and that will limit their ability to obtain the nutrients and the resources that they need to continue their life. And they'll essentially die of starvation on their own accord. I hate to say it or predict any bad for him, but he's just about done. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I live in paradise. I work with uh, amazing, amazing animals. But, um, you know, if you're gonna work with wild animals, uh, they do die. And uh, it just breaks my heart, puts a lump in my throat. Okay. Ooh. All right. Steve Searles is devoted to protecting black bears, but he can't save all of them. In Mammoth, the bear's single biggest threat is traffic. I'm sorry to say that the, the accidents that we've responded to and seen this year is, is more than I've ever seen. Bears often misjudge how fast a car is going. With lots of tourist traffic and a major highway nearby, collisions are inevitable. I responded to a call from dispatch for a bear that had been hit on our highway coming into town. Steve doesn't know what shape the bear's in, so out of respect for the animal, he looks for it alone, bringing only his camera to document whatever may happen. I found the bear. All right. All right, pal. Steve's seen this bear before. It's a burly male he spotted for the first time a few months back. Wow, look at that guy's huge. Steve spent time over the winter studying the bear. You're OK. You're all right. Hey, mister. Hey, guy. When I respond to a call for an injured bear that I don't know, it's difficult. When it's one that I've spent a lot of time studying, it makes it extra hard. Hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Uh, the bear started pulling himself up the tree because he couldn't push with his rear legs. He was uh, clenching onto the branches with his teeth so that he could reposition his front paws and pull up that huge body weight. Are y'all busted up? Are y'all busted up? To see him pull himself up with his teeth, it broke my heart. Oh, buddy. Oh, mister. He splayed out on the branches and was in a, a lot of pain. Three of his legs were gripping into the branches, and the right rear was just hanging and dangling in the air. Steve has to make a difficult decision. The bear is in excruciating pain and his injuries are substantial. It's part of my job to put the motions aside and act responsibly for the best of the animal and do the right thing. I knew this bear had to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.
working with wildlife. Um, has the good days and has the bad days. I got blood on my glasses. That's a bad day. I was really distraught that day and felt bad about putting my buddy down. Then I went and got gloves, got up there and unwrapped them. I choose to put them back on the land, putting a magnificent animal in the landfill. It, it just seems so disrespectful. Ending an injured bear's life is an agonizing part of Steve's job. It brings out a side of him few ever see. He sends the bear off in the tradition of the local Paiute Shoshone tribe who revere the bears. The Native Americans taught me to use tools, whether it's the tobacco or the smudge or a prayer or a song. All that shows the respect I have for the bear and, and try to help them on a little bit. Through these small offerings, it helps to hopefully soothe his pain as well as mine. Take away, hunt, hunt, hunt away. Hunt, 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 hunt. Not everyone considers a bear's death a tragedy. Because of their immense size, adult males are prized by hunters as trophy kills. How long ago was there somebody with the gun? Hunting is legal in California, but not in the town of Mammoth Lakes. So when Steve gets a report of a bear that's possibly been shot, he responds quickly. The man says that there was a guy with a gun 20 minutes ago, and then uh, his kids say that there's a bear that was twitching around and laying down in the backyard. If there's anybody in the area with a gun, uh, that will be a problem. So we're just going to run up here about a block away. And we'll see if we can help out a little bit. Based on where we are in the neighborhood, it's going to be likely Big Red or Little Red. I can't hardly tell them apart anymore, but this is their area. making too much attention. Hey, good, how are you? Steve tries to find the bear without drawing a crowd. He heads to the house where the bear was last seen and finds it under a porch. He doesn't seem to be struggling. I can see that the bear's obviously alive, and so that's a good thing. It turns out someone overreacted. The bear is just asleep. It's a six and a half foot, seven foot bear. Um, I can't see exactly who it is. He's got his head covered, um, but uh, he doesn't seem to be any uh, duress at all. So we'll just uh, keep observing him. He's a big, big bear and sleeping soundly. We'll probably let him be here until this evening where he can move out safely. It's midday. It's a lot of dogs, kids, people around. You just can't have this bear, you know, walking around right now. Um, it would be problematic, to say the least. I know. I know. We don't mean you no harm. Yeah, I think I woke him up. Are you all right? 
You look okay. All right. You're a Popeye. You're a Popeye. Okay. Okay. The bear turns out to be Little Red, one of Steve's study bears who typically stays out of trouble. All right. We are kind of in the middle of two busy streets, and so we don't want to move this bear right now. That's it. start a rodeo or have people bothering him. To make sure Little Red doesn't end up in trouble, Steve keeps a close watch, but the bear doesn't like the attention. He's got his front shoulders down. The bear's body language signals his level of anxiety. Little Red feels threatened. All right. Steve tries to calm the bear by talking to it. Mm. All right, I know, I know. OK, I'll back off if you do. If we're out in the forest, we would have backed off immediately. I own the pavement, he owns the forest, and that's the deal we have. And um, he was trying to challenge me, basically, you know, near my home. And uh, that just won't go square with me. It's a tricky situation. At any time, Little Red could overwhelm Steve and win the battle for dominance. Black bears are strong. They're immensely strong, stronger than a human by far. And it's real easy for a black bear to overcome a human. All right, all right. Oh. No, 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 no. We already talked about that. You stay right there and get some sleep, all right? With male bears, it's often a battle of wills. For Steve to maintain absolute authority, it's imperative that he gets the bears to back down every time. We're not in the middle of the forest. We're in a residential area. All of his senses know that. All of my senses know that. It's just bad bear management to let bears bluff people. It starts with me. It'll go to the tourist locals. And um, I run this town, not him. He's more than welcome to live here, but he can't bluff people off. There you go. There you go. Come on, outside. Get out of there. Earlier, Steve evicted a bear from under a house with a jacuzzi. Now, he's been called back to the same location. Well, this bear don't mean any harm, but he's found just a great spot to hang out. And he'll remember me running him off last time. And so uh, we're just going to give him a little nudge. and reinforce the message that he can't be out here, be under here. Come on. You remember. Come on. Ow. Poor guy thinks he's in paradise, and I got to let him know he's not. Come on. Ow. He didn't like that pepper spray last time. Come on. Let's go. Ow. Come on. Get out of there. But when Steve finally sees the bear, he makes a surprising discovery. Oh, hi. Well, it's not a nice bear. I thought it was the same bear as last time, but it's not. You don't want out. Pepper spray was so effective the last time, Steve decides to use it again. All right, dude. You got to come up. Here we go. There he goes. Look at that big cinnamon. Wow. All right, all right. Yeah, it was the big cinnamon, and it wasn't nice bear. As much as I know about bears, I uh, mistake them sometimes, too. To make sure the large bear is staying out of trouble, Steve follows him into the forest. This place is mine and not his, and he just has to know that, and now he does. No harm, no foul. All right. Look at the steam coming out of him. I thought he could poach a spot here. I think he's kind of annoyed with me. The bear instinctively trees himself, but he's put on a lot of weight, which signals something else to Steve. The season is coming to an end. Oh, look at his big tummy. Oh, you're bigger than a house, dude. He looks like a, a Wookiee or something. Look, he's too fat. Can you imagine the pressure on his toes right now? 
He's a seven foot bear with a big old gut. And I would guess that he is over 400 pounds right now. He could probably do it a little bit faster, but he's really at weight right now. He'll probably hunker down up there until uh, nightfall tonight. What a beauty. The bear is securely treed. Hopefully, he's learned the same lesson that Nice Bear did and won't be back. Nice Bear hasn't been under there in a month. And so that's a success. And now this bear knows it's uh, off limits. We'll let him be as long as he stays in the forest and not under somebody's house. To keep the enormous animals at a safe distance from people, Steve often depends on his ability to think like the bears. When he hears of a sizable bear inside a culvert where it doesn't belong, he knows exactly how to handle it. There's a lot of kids that come home from school and um, they tease the bear that's in there. And, and so I, I just don't want him there. And so I'm gonna go take care of this real quick. There's a green belt that's adjacent to the property and uh, make it super easy to um, have the bear go off into the forest. This is one of the larger culverts. Uh, they're just storm drains, really. This one's so tall that he can stand up in there and uh, you know, get out really quickly and get in quickly. It's not the first time Steve has had to forcibly eject a bear from this culvert. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living there for a couple weeks now. And the kids check the culvert every time they come home from school, try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. <laughs> But this time, there are no bystanders. It's only Steve and the bear. Well, where the bears are and what their habits are, I try to keep that secret. The police are out doing police work. I get to uh, move that bear along. And so um, the more that I can keep the bear's privacy and my privacy, it's just the better it is. I'm going to launch just a green meanie. Uh, that's what I used last time. When deployed, the non-lethal green meanie flies erratically and makes a loud whistling noise that will scare the bear, but not hurt it. It doesn't work. The culvert is the length of a football field, and Steve can't get a good angle on his shot, so the green meanie barely makes a sound. He tries again. The full effect of the noise is lost inside the long cavernous culvert. But still, the bear knows something is not right, and instead of leaving, he feels safer hidden inside. But it's getting late, and the kids will be home from school shortly, so this bear has to move now. Come on, out. Come on. Working with the aluminum bat is just kind of uh, my calling card. The bears are used to it. I've done it for Come probably on. 15 Ow. years, and so I've always used that same bat. And I think on. the bears have you know, become accustomed to it. When they hear that bat bang, and they know it's time to go. Finally, it works. Get out. Out. Go in the woods. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of there. Go on. You bad bear. Go on. But when Steve looks inside the tube, he makes a shocking discovery. A second bear. Oh, hi. You got to come out. Once again, Steve finds himself in an unpredictable situation. Lo and behold, there wasn't one bear. There was two. To have two bears bed together is really quite odd. He deploys a cherry bomb. The non-lethal explosion should be enough to persuade the second bear to seek safer ground. Go on. Go on, yeah. Last couple of years, we've seen the bears teaming up more. And uh, I don't understand it all yet, but uh, we'll keep studying it and learning from them. But uh, the, the buddy bears seem to be in there uh, coexisting just as well as we do. It's just another twist in what has made this the strangest year Steve has ever seen. This bear has left the area and into the forest. I'm 1098, 108 available. Everything I know about bears, they taught me. 
I try to bounce that back and teach them. I'm not the nicest guy in the world. I uh, pretty much run alone. I work alone. I am kind of a solo guy. The bears were kind of solo, and so it really works out for both of us. As the season comes to a close, Steve spends some much needed quiet time with his bears. Hey, big fella. I know. You're all right. Yeah, this bear has certainly made weight. He is um, looking very fit. We're glad to see him. These bears won't be in town much longer. They'll go up to altitude where they make their dens, and they'll be out of town for another six months. It's just a real magical time of year for me that, you know, I can see them up close and personal before they go into the long den. It's a bittersweet time. Steve can never be sure which bears will return the following spring, but in his own way, he sends them off. Goya, Goya, we Boy, would I love to share with everybody what it's like to sit this close with a bear. Yeah, I don't know how to put it into words, but. I'll miss him, I will. You help me a lot more than I help you. You have a good night. They're the juvenile delinquents of the bear world. Go on, get! Pushing boundaries. Put it down. Defying authority. The bad bear! And breaking all the rules. These guys are full-blown knuckleheads. I need everybody to move this area. It's critical to teach them right from wrong. Go on, get! Get! Bears that don't learn, die. Do you understand what's going on? And it's one man's mission to keep them alive. Boom, 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 boom. It's all right, come on down, let's go. Steve Searles, the bear whisperer. Get out of there, you bad bear. You're gonna have to work this out. This season, one bear causes a public scene. It's kind of exciting. Get out of here, go on. Three bears face down Steve. No. While another shocks the entire community. If the bear's on scene, it'll be shot on sight. Go now. I heard a growl. The unthinkable has happened. He walked right up in front of me. A visitor in town has two mysterious puncture wounds. There's two on scene right now. Did one of Steve's bears cross the line? That kind of thing will get you killed. What is that right there? This is the Mammoth Lakes Bear Report. Skies are clear, winds are calm. Looks like another gorgeous day in Mammoth. Spring in the Eastern Sierras. The start of the six month feeding season when Mammoth Lake's most celebrated residents make their way back into town. We've got two young bears up in a tree. Not sure what they're going to do next, but tune in later and we'll let you know. Oh, look at oh. that. That's, great. <laughs> That's amazing. How cool. Look at him. Thousands and thousands of people have seen bears in my community, and I'm proud of it. I never got this close to a bear. If you catch a big fish here in Mammoth, you'll tell the story, you know, 10 or 15 times. You see a bear in Mammoth, and uh, you'll repeat that story for the rest of your life. And the chances of seeing a bear here are good from mid-April to late October, when they go back into hibernation. Thanks to Steve, the town successfully coexists with the local bear population all summer long. Steve has put Mammoth farther ahead than other communities. And I think it's because he's got that on the ground 
um, out of book experience. <laughs> Steve does it his way, and it, he does it based on long years of trial and error. There's a really long list of successes and um, bears that are just push button bears, I call them half bib, big red the big blonde, all those are examples of bears that have not been involved in issues. They're just trouble free, and uh, they're just a pleasure to have living in our community. But many bears don't start out this way. Often the biggest challenge for Steve comes from the youngest bears. What in the world? They would be the teenagers of the bear society, and um, just like we grew out of those dumb things that we did. They're just in the sharpest part of the learning curve. Get out of there. If we were 60 miles out in the wilderness with this same scenario, are those one year and year and a half old cubs any smarter? Heck no. Uh, they can get in trouble falling out of trees, falling into uh, swift water, predators, uh, coyote, um, other uh, male bears. It's just a matter of learning uh, what is scary and dangerous and what's not. <laughs> In the life cycle of a California black bear, cubs are taught by their mothers. In the spring, the bears will emerge. The females will nurture their young, teaching the young what to eat, how to eat, where to obtain the food. And that's a very critical time for a cub life. After about a year and a half to two years, the female will push off the cubs to go find an area or a territory of their own. If young bears want to live in Mammoth Lakes, they must learn to navigate a human society. Go on now, get out, hey, get out of there. Go on, get out, get out of there. So Steve often plays the role of surrogate parent. They don't have the benefit of their mother teaching them, so I'll try to step in and do what I can to help them learn the ways of man. There you go, let's go. To teach them, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques. He can literally yell and scream and just use his voice if need be, bang a baseball bat and scare him in that manner. Go back. He also uses what they call flash bangs that are noise devices that sizzle and whiz as they go past the bear to scare it. And he also, in many cases, will use a rubber bullet, which just gives the bear a good sting and lets him feel like this isn't where I want to be. I'm getting the heck out of here. The bat bear. Bears that are a little bit uh, too friendly or getting into garages or uh, stealing out of cars, that kind of thing. I typically spend more time tracking them, following them, reprimanding them. Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. It's just an ongoing conversation and education uh, for me and the bears. Is that you, Ace? Is that you? One of my most favorite bears and probably one of Mammoth's biggest success stories. Ace was once the town's most notorious young bear. Come on, get out of there. It has broken into as many as eight or nine homes. About half of those homes have been occupied. Police were ordered to shoot Ace on sight. I'm not willing to compromise a human life to uh, save a bear. But Steve believed he could turn the young bear around. What are you doing? He tried every non-lethal technique he had. Finally, it paid off. Get out of here! He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call in all last year and all so far this year. I'm very glad you're alive. Every year there's another ace, but nothing could prepare Steve for the challenge of this season's young bears. I'm on a one, one, left one. one, one. I'm gonna be out uh, for crowd control. And... One, 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 one. We're um, just gonna roll up here to Lincoln House at the village. Uh, the last couple of nights, a young bear was swimming in the pond and uh, it makes her a cute story, but it's just not okay. North Village is a multi-story mall setting with lots of restaurants and people and uh, activities. Mono one, Wallach one. 
It's a small cub uh, in a tree in North Village, and uh, we'll be staying on scene until the bears left the area. Copy, good for. Could you move back, please? If you interviewed the 200 people that were there, they'd all say it was neat or cute. It's kind of exciting. That's for sure. People aren't intimidated by small bears. Typically, you know, you'll see people that'll put their kids right up next to the bears and want to take pictures with them. They have this idea that the bears are our pets or they're friendly. That's not it. They're actually, you know, they're wild animals. They they're, can be dangerous. I need everybody to move this area. When the bear comes down the tree, I'm likely going to shoot him on the ass with a rubber bullet and let him know it's not OK to be with the guests and everybody here having dinner. An hour later, night is fast approaching. The crowd is growing. Can you see his face? Yeah. And the young bear refuses to come down. As far as bear calls go, uh, this is kind of my worst nightmare. Go now. He's going to be moving pretty quickly. So we want to make sure that there's a way for the bear to get out that, you know, we're not going to run him right into some people and, and get them scared or, or injured. <laughs> He's trying to come down. There's too many people around. I'm going to stay right here on scene until he touches that grass. And when he does, I'm going to light him up with rubber cock. It's a 12-gauge rubber slug. Gets shot at him. Doesn't typically break the skin or cause any permanent damage to him. We are backed up on the police department. We have 12-gauge shotguns. If the bear turns and charges Steve or charges into the crowd or becomes a, a threat to the public, then we're there able to stop that and put the bear down immediately. He could stay up there for days if he wanted to. He can obviously outlast us. I predict that as the crowd winds down and people are quieter, um, he'll come down. Oh, he's coming. here you bad bear wow it's very so good yes yeah. would have scared me bad once it hit the ground he tagged the bear with uh multiple rubber buck shots but it's definitely going to get their attention and tell me probably shouldn't be in here obviously the bear has learned quite a lesson i'd much rather the fire four rounds of rubber uh striking the bear and then have him shot or killed at a later date if he needs any more education, we can do that for him, too. But uh, hopefully that'll be enough for tonight, and we won't have uh, any more issues with this young bear uh, in with a bunch of people. Mono one, wildlife one. I'll be 98 from the call and patrolling area. This year's bear season has just begun. There's three bears playing in the pond on the golf course right now. The three young bears are the first to make it into town. Copy that, thank you. After a chaotic night with one of them, Steve is on high alert. They won't be far. All right, all right, wow. Very cool, man. Oh, oh, what is kind of way is that to come down? The two of the bears are siblings. The third, oh, stop. What, what was that? You're gonna have to practice. Uh, the third one is not a litter mate. These three bears are just playing and they're not doing anything wrong. I just want them to get into harm's way when they're roughhousing like this, they forget where they are. Hello, it's the knuckleheads. Uh, when it comes to young bears uh, under two, I don't name them because, you know, statistically half of them are going to die. And so maybe to preserve my own feelings and preserve the community's feelings, unless it's necessary, uh, I try to not name those young bears until they're after two. 
Oh, that's beautiful. There's my paycheck this week. Pretty rough on each other. Uh, those teeth are very, very sharp. And uh, even though they look like a teddy bear or something, they can inflict harm. It's all part of the learning process for these bears and the pecking order that they're gonna slowly grow into. There you go. Beat them up. Beat them up. Hello. Oh. You know, I see the most worst stuff in my life, and then I see the coolest stuff, and it um, makes me feel weird sometimes. And uh, this is really, really cool, and uh, fills my heart. You know, it makes me want to go out and help the little guys even more. Hello. Hello. You're all right. I don't know who's babysitting who sometimes. Probably a 50 50. Um, the bears help me as much as I help them. That's a pretty fair deal. What is it? What is it? Uh oh. They are arguing. Is that trash? it. Hey, you guys, put it down. Hey. No, 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 no. No. One of the most important lessons for these young bears to learn is to stay away from unnatural foods. Put it down. No trash. No. No. No, no, no. Get out of there. No. Look at it all over your face. Move away. Her brains. It's some kind of. Turkey breast skins. That's not what's in here. It smells like ranch dressing. That's what it is. We gotta keep human food out of bears because it draws a connection between the people and then the food source. And so the bear does become conditioned to come back for that same food source. But even after being chased off, the bears are back and willing to defy Steve to get what they want. No. Knock it off. Move away. Move away. How dare you? No. You guys need to learn. Go over there and get in the tree. Go on. Go on. You've worn out your welcome. No, do not challenge people for food. They're testing their boundaries. No. Two of the young bears back away, but the third bear returns. To send the message that this behavior will not be tolerated, Steve stands by with pepper spray. Part of my job is uh, cruel to be kind, to educate that bear that this has got to stop. This stuff works great. Uh, they don't like it one single bit. And uh, hopefully that'll teach them a lesson for today. Don't be challenging me or anybody else over a food source at all. That is absolutely off limits. It's a lose-lose situation for the bear. When the bear has unnatural food sources that it relies on, it becomes more aggressive, it gets closer to humans more often, and unfortunately, it may result in the loss of a bear life, which is one thing we're trying to avoid at all costs here in Mammoth. During bear season, Steve works seven days a week and is on call 24 hours a day. Probably my strongest thing I have in my life is my wife and my son. Just a, a hug from my son or a hug from my wife means a lot to me. I have been in Mammoth since 1985. I met Steve through friends. I used to see him at parties and stuff. Behind every great man is a greater woman. I get the, the applause and all the thank yous, and uh, my wife does everything that makes my lifestyle possible. On the agenda this morning, 
helping Steve maintain his distinctive mountain man look. Been trimming Steve's beard for oh, close to 20 years. The last time he shaved and had a haircut was on our wedding day 20 years ago. 20, 20 or 16 days and three hours. <laughs> Talk it up, hon. A trim, please. <laughs> my dad actually gave him the haircut. I think Steve was more nervous getting his haircut by my dad than, than actually getting married. <laughs> Steve's routine in bear season, you know, he's like a, like a puppy or a dog or a kid. Comes home when he's thirsty and hungry. Thanks, hon. Oh, hang on, I see a couple of strays already. Four weeks into the feeding season, the three young bears are now venturing out individually, looking for food. There's two things that a bear goes through. They're wandering about the woods looking for whatever they can encounter during their normal course of action. But if they encounter something new, they'll still try it. My neighbor just called and there's a bear, so we're gonna go take a look. A bear can smell food three miles away and one of the young bears is drawn to a picnic table in a residential neighborhood. When Steve arrives, the bear is gone. Look at all this garbage. Holy cow. Wow. Oh, these people are just pigs. It looks like some pizza boxes and stuff. My neighbors were so irresponsible and disrespectful uh, that they left all their garbage out and uh, the bear was uh, hooking into it and it just breaks my heart. You know, I love the bears and um, it's just the epitome of the struggle I face every day. All this trash needs to be picked up. The bears have been standing here eating the You can clean all up right now. People make a bad bear actually by allowing them to become habituated to our food and trash and other things. So it's really a people problem. 20 minutes later. Hello. The same bear has been spotted less than a mile away. We'll be on our way. No. Get out of there. Get out of there. Go on now, get. Knock it off. Hi. We just followed him up here and seen him in your trash. Is there somewhere I can lock this up? It's full. The people that live in Mammoth will tolerate uh, more from the bears than I will. I know the bears individually, and when they mess up or at the wrong place at the wrong time, I really take it personally. I don't want them to have that extra strike against them. The young bear has backed himself into a corner. A bear! A bear! He's now between apartment buildings and a busy highway. He doesn't belong in this situation. He can see the traffic, the cars going by. We want him to be uncomfortable. We want him to have a bad time. He can't be hanging out in the middle of the day on the main street of Mammoth. Or we'll end up picking him off the road, or he'll get himself into other trouble. Hey, 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 we're not going to chase the bear. We're not going to do that. Look right there, right there. Hey, 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 hey. Leave this one alone. I'm going to have to get a lot more heavy handed with the young bear. The more time that we're on him, uh, just like a child or a dog, uh, the repetitious reprimanding of bears that sometimes is necessary. I'm 100% uh, sure that uh, I'll be working with the bear again, if not today, tomorrow. Bears remember locations where they've been successful finding food. So the next day, Steve returns to the same area the bear had gotten into trouble. 
Sure enough, the young bear is back. There he is. Damn it. No trash. Get out of there. Hey! Get out of there. Hey! No trash! How dare you? No! Go on! Get out of there! The bad bear! I barely lit him up with a little bit of rubber buckshot and let him know, you know, that you're welcome to be here, but only on our rules. And um, that's what I do, I spank. But there are three young bears this season, and Steve can't be everywhere at once. These small bears that we work with every year, they can be a handful. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes our town to raise these silly little bears. As the feeding season heats up, Steve gets busier. A single round deployed out on Sierra Star for just a bear grazing near the tourist. By midsummer, he patrols day and night, looking for things that might get his bears into trouble. Like open dumpsters. Well, I just pulled up, and um, this is the first one I found. Um, when you hook this little guy, the bear, with all his might, can't break this chain. And so, um, unhooked, it's easily opened and defeated. We'll just see, maybe the trash company just emptied it. Uh, nope, it's got trash in it, and so there is the problem. Leaving the dumpster unlocked is just no good. And is there a connection between feeding bears in a town and getting them shot? There really is. Don't ever feed a bear where you don't want them to come back to. Feeding bears certainly does happen. It's important for people to understand that it's, it's not something that's allowed under town law, in the town of Mammoth Lakes, under state law or under federal law. It puts them at risk. It's habituating them to an unnatural situation. It's making it comfortable for them to get close to people. It can lead to that bear's destruction. Steve is called out to the local town yard to help a man who's in a standoff with a bear. A guy's down at the town fuel pumps who's asking for me in particular to come down that the bear is not moving away from him and the gas pumps so that he could refuel. The local town yard, where police cars and buses are serviced, is only blocks away from the industrial dumping yards. When Steve arrives, the bear is gone. What'd the bear look like? He wasn't that big. Uh-huh. Um, but he just, like, right up between these, this rock and this small tree where that light point now where he just went. Yeah. But he sat right here for the longest time until you, as soon as you pull in is when he took off. Steve spots trash on the hillside. Right and more unlocked dumpsters. What the friggin' heck? You can't blame that on tourists. This is just the epitome of the struggle I face every day. To see them eating unnatural food and people being irresponsible can lead to more and more problems. By the height of the season, the big bears have moved into the most desirable feeding areas, pushing out the smaller bears. And sometimes, the smaller bears resort to dangerous measures to get what they want. It's the uh, condominium project, and uh, it's been reported that the bears are hopping the fences and getting into the trash cans. Uh-oh. There he is. There he is, running with trash in front of the car. It's going to be a really small bear, dark head, and kind of a light-colored cape. And it does look like a female. Steve gets a closer look. This is far more serious than just a bear foraging through trash. It just blew out the window of that car. Breaking into cars is exactly the kind of bad behavior that, if left unchecked, can lead to a bear losing its life. I want the bear to reapproach and uh, hop in that car again. I'll teach her a lesson that she'll never, ever forget. 
Yeah, I can see it from here. And he's going to re-enter the car. Before he can deal with the bear, Steve is distracted. Look at all these folks. Uh, you're going to uh, tranquilize? tranquilize it? No, no, no. Uh, there, we, nobody does it in California. The bear can either live here and have good manners or right. won't live at all. So um, what I do is teach bears and teach them good respect for people in situations mm -hmm. they shouldn't be in. So what do you, how do you... Rubber bullets, pyrotechnics, flashbang devices, um, mm -hmm. pepper spray, all kinds of different Just devices. Them, but... Not to scare them, but to teach them uh, what they're not allowed okay. to do and what uh, they're allowed to do. Uh, yeah. Okay. So where, where did it go? Did you, yeah, did you see it? Or did uh, it I don't know, but um, I didn't realize you were standing here. I'm glad I did. Once Steve is assured the group will stay where they are, he goes back to look for the bear. The bear's right there. He went back into where the bear had hidden, and next thing we know, we hear like three or four, a big, loud bam, 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 bam. Get out of here. Go on, get. The girls are freaking out, and we're kind of scared. You bad bear, get. The rounds that I fired were all non-lethal. The first rounds on, struck the bear. Um, the other rounds uh, did not. But uh, it sure lets the bear know that this is not a good thing to be doing. You bad bear. After running the bear off, Steve finds a candy wrapper. Chocolate. That leads him to a trail of food left in the car. We can see bagels on the floor, water, drinks. They're really lucky they didn't have more damage than this. They had both windows down a little bit with the doors locked, and so the bear just pulled on it one time and popped it. I mean, we learned a valuable lesson ourselves to just kind of, you know, keep our cars clean. Immediately, I tell my kids, you know, go clean your cars out, take everything out of it, all the candy, any soda, anything else. So, so they did. We're going to continue to patrol the area. Uh, this uh, car owner gets the free sticker. And um, they're not going to get fined for feeding bears. I think that the uh, damage that's done says enough for that. Hey, hello. Yes? We'll be on our way. Thank you. A friend of mine just called me, and uh, a young cub is uh, in his backyard. We're just going to run up there and uh, see which bear it is. The homes in Mammoth butt up against the forest, and many of the residents like to document the bears in town. To me, they're like the spirit of the forest. I call them the spirit of the forest because they're so quiet. I mean, you can be walking. and not even realize they're there. One of the reasons we have so many bears in this particular area is we have everything here that the bears need to live. We have the, the woodland where they can get privacy and sleep back here, which they do, and can get away from people and other bears and, and uh, have a peaceful existence. But this young bear hasn't come here to relax. He's trying to figure out how to get that bird feeder down. Bird seed is very nutritious. The, the seeds are packed with fats and oils that they require, as well as protein. They readily will take to it and enjoy it immensely. It's almost like ice cream to them. People in Mammoth are encouraged to, to get the bird feeders so that the bears can't get to them, because they uh, potentially could associate bird feeders with homes and houses. So what we've done is we've strung wire between pine trees, a long run of wire, up very high. He then ended up uh, going to a neighbor's house. And she uh, just happened to have set her bird feeders up out on branches, hoping that the bear couldn't reach out far enough to, to grab them. grabbed it and crunched it in half.
Go on, get up there. Go on. Go on, get. Go on, get. That's the crack cocaine of a bear's life. It's just silly bird food. Ah, get. He moved out of the area respectfully. He's done what he was supposed to. He's back in the deep woods. Everything's good again. Steve takes the opportunity to reinforce the young bear's obedient behavior. Are you starting to learn? The monotone I use with the bears lets them know whether or not he's on my terms or we're on his terms. And I'm laying on the ground. I'm being submissive to him. He's out in the thick forest. He's under the canopy. He's in no trouble at all. I compare it to raising my son. Or even when I have to reprimand my son, I'm loving on him the very next minute. These bears can understand that exact same principle. All right. All right. Once the bear does the right thing, then we're back to the relationship that we were having uh, before that incident. All right. Sleepy. <laughs> this bear seems to finally be learning how to live in town, but there are still two other bears who have a long way to go. Thank you very much for calling. I'll be in route right now. One of the young bears has really crossed the line. This morning, I woke up to a bunch of racket and realized that the bear had actually squeezed itself through this little window. I didn't even know that this window was open. And as soon as the bear squeezed out, it actually turned around and tried to go back in. So um, bear strips are down. She had assembled nail boards uh, to put outside of her windows and doors uh, to keep the bear from standing up on its back legs and hopping in the uh, window. And the unfortunate thing is that the bear has been rewarded by coming in my house. So essentially, my house is kind of like a calling card at this point. I think also the fact that my house is in proximity to this campground doesn't really help too much either. If that bear comes today, um, call me immediately. Yeah, I will. All right. Breaking into homes is a serious offense. Steve needs to find the bear and teach him a lesson, fast. He heads to the nearby campground. The bear has taken refuge in a tree. The dogs put him up there. Anytime a bear is afraid or concerned or hears a loud noise, um, he's going to tree every time. And being at this age, they spend half of their day up in the tree. Oh, look at him. So How cool. Look at him put his chin up on his head. <laughs> as long as I keep him up there, part of the punishment, all these people that have been gathered around, the dogs that were here on scene, makes him very uncomfortable. And keeping the bear uncomfortable is the plan. It's the only way to teach the bear that being around people is dangerous. I feel sorry. Uh, I do. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, you guys, everybody get a photo? Yep. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Make sure your camp is clean, OK? Check your cars, make sure there's no food. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Once the crowd is cleared, Steve focuses all his energy on the bear and getting him out of the tree. It's all right, come on down, let's go. To move the bear, Steve mimics the sound a sow would make to her cub. It's a very guttural uh, tone that comes down below her throat. I'll use that to calm young bears. I've done it so many times with so many bears. As the bear moves down, Steve approaches the tree armed with pepper spray, a potent aerosol that overwhelms the senses but wears off quickly. Come on. Come on. Poor little guy. I don't want to hurt him, but this has got to end. The bear bites into a tree branch, signaling his level of anxiety. So we're just playing cat and mouse. He's going to try to come down again right now. Nasty, nasty stuff. 
I hate to. Uh... <gasps> That's some nasty stuff. Um, the bears hate it. Uh, he really. There's a little puff of wind right then, and uh, so we got a little back spray. But um, yeah, the bears have to learn that people are mean. They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And uh, he doesn't get it, but um, he just has to learn or he'll get, he'll die. Since the pepper spray missed the bear, Steve must try again. I'll stand here for as long as it takes. I'll do it for days or weeks. This time, he stands by with a shotgun loaded with rubber buckshot. Come on. Go on, get! Bad bear! Go on, get! Just the noise of the shotgun racking, it's all a uh, non-lethal deterrent for the bear. Like a dog or a child, hopefully he can learn and uh, become uh, a member of our community and these problems won't be an issue. Ten weeks into the season, the big bears have moved in and the younger bears are pushed out of the prime feeding areas. The three young bears Steve has been working with are staying out of trouble, at least for now. Seven, next seven, six, roger. Steve gets a late-night bear call for a shocking incident unlike anything he's encountered before. What happened right here? One injured victim with two uh, puncture wounds to the right arm. A wounded man claims he was knocked over by a small bear. They got knocked over, and then when did you rec realize they had a hole in your arm? Oh, I, I, it was sore, so I just took off my, my, I had a jacket on, I just took the jacket, and I noticed that my shirt was bloody. Did he bite you on? I don't know what it is. I, actually, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to, because there's no real puncture wounds in the, in the. It sure looks like a puncture wound. Huh? Well, this one is. No, through the, through the jacket. This, this is just a scratch, I think. It's Don, huh? Yeah. Thank you, John. I appreciate your patience, but this is really concerning to us. And, uh, but I, I, I really do think I spooked him. He's come for the arts festival, and he is selling his wares, which is pottery, and uh, this event happened. I was just walking down here from the restrooms, right? And I came across right here, and I heard a, I heard a growl. And I went, I turned, I don't even know which way I turned, and then that's when he, he just, boom, hit me. It could be uh, that he startled the bear or frightened the bear. The bear was just bowling him over to get out of harm's way. And then after he hit you, I hit the, I hit the, the table. table. I, no, I, I slammed in the table and, and fell down. That's Where how do you I, think you hit the table? Where did I? Here, right? My arm. Yeah. We need to get him down to the bed. Yeah. The man's description and the mysterious puncture wounds don't add up. A lot of times they push. I could have stabbed him. Could have just been a stab. I think it's a canine bite. Yeah. Paramedics arrive on scene and confirm Steve's suspicions. He told me that they're three-eighths of an inch deep, and it's a bite and not a claw mark. <laughs> serious. I haven't seen a bear bite up here. It's the first one. Usually they run away. They seem to get a little more aggressive. And that behavior is not tolerated by anyone in the town of Mammoth Lakes. If the bear's on scene in just the next 30 minutes, he'll be shot on sight. One that attacked the guy. But identifying the bear responsible isn't easy. 
We don't use collars or ear tags or uh, telemetry on our bears, and so I'd hate to see the wrong bear shot right now. The RP is describing a small, dark, 150-pound uh, uh, bear. That would be one of the knuckleheads. These bears are very, very powerful, and what they would do just to nip you would cause an injury like that. Police are on the lookout for any bear that matches the description of the young bears. We had already made that decision that if we could locate that bear in a timely manner, that that bear was going to be taken out. And we would be justified in doing so. People versus animals, you know, I go on the side of people every time. The bear returns to where the event happened. We'll hear the shot. Uh, he'll, he'll shoot the bear immediately. This thing charges me. I'm going to open it up with bean bags. And Jesse, I expect you'll be right behind me. We have a local officer with probably five or six rounds on non-lethal bean bags. The other officer is a marksman uh, training officer that is on scene with a high-powered rifle. And uh, if the bear returns to where the event happened, he'll shoot the bear immediately. While police officers patrol the area, Steve investigates what might have provoked the bear. That's the attraction right there. A snack bar vendor from the arts festival left out food. This is just These people come from out of town, and uh, this is just prime food for the bears here. And so uh, they bait him in, and somebody got hurt tonight. This is flour or sugar, granulated garlic, coconut milk. This is what started the whole thing. The bear was uh, taking advantage of that food source. And as the gentleman was uh, walking through the venue in the middle of the night, uh, he scared the bear. The bear only had one way out. That guy, unfortunately, was in his way and was knocked over and uh, ended up with two holes in his arm. Steve and the police comb the area. But the bear is nowhere to be found. The mess still hasn't been cleaned up. The food's still on site. But the bear wasn't seen directly after the event. Um, as every hour ticks by, uh, he will buy himself time on this earth. We waited for the bear to return and kind of cruised the area. And it was gone. Twenty-four hours after a man suffered a rare bear bite, he's okay. Steve returns to the site, determined to not have a repeat incident. This is ground zero. This is where it all occurred last night. The gentleman who was nipped by the bear is right here behind me, and I think I owe him at least that to uh, make sure a bear doesn't come anywhere near here tonight. And it doesn't take long for Steve to spot a bear nearby. I'm going to turn my light on him and walk up a few feet, and I'm going to hopefully uh, shoot him multiple times for even being here. If this other young bear comes here, I'm going to treat him the same way, too. Get out of here! We fired off some rubber rounds to let the bear know to run away from people. Mono one, wildlife one. I fired three more non-lethal rounds at the same location uh, in case you get a call. Copy three non-lethal. And I dare say the bear, you know, won't be back very soon. It is my belief to this day that is that bear was ricocheting off the guy that he did nip him in the arm. The bear didn't return. It was just a freak collision in the middle of the night. The bear bite remains an isolated incident. In the weeks following that night, Steve continued to carefully monitor the three young bears. Today, all are alive and well, thanks to Steve and his dedication. I see things that are magical. They are the most positive images that anybody could witness. And maybe an hour later, I have to go to calls that, gosh, are not good at all. We OK? We going to work together tomorrow? All right. Go back to sleep if you agree. Six more cabins to work in Mammoth Lakes, California. He came right to our window. One bear turns everything upside down. The bear comes up, breaks in windows, breaks in doors. 
Only the man they call the Bear Whisperer knows just how far this bear will go. That just gave me shivers up my spine that she could be alive and wreak havoc like she did a year ago. Are you all right, ma'am? It's like a crazed animal at this point. What it did to our community, what it did to me, it was all just shattering. And in the town that loves its bears. It's all right, good girl. No one thought it would come to this. There she is. You got a good shot at her, right? Goya, Goya. Mammoth Lakes, a mountain resort town located in the middle of some of California's last true wilderness. We happen to live in God's country. We're a day's walk from Yosemite. Um, it's just paradise up here. And so uh, the people know it, and uh, the bears know it too. The Mammoth Lakes area is very popular with black bears. And the residents down there have really taken to these bears. They feel that those are their bears, and rightfully so. I mean, they learn to live with these bears, and they become residents of the community just as you know the humans that live in the area are. As the town's wildlife patrol officer, it's Steve Searle's job to teach bears to be respectful of people and their houses. A bear that encroaches on either can end up being killed by authorities. No. Move away. He relates to bears and is able to convince them not to get into people's territory in a dangerous way. He teaches them how to live with people. And he's been teaching people how to live with bears. From the minute the bears emerge from winter hibernation, Steve is on patrol. They've lost approximately 50 to 60% of their body weight surviving through the winter. So when they wake up in the spring, they're motivated entirely by food. They will wake up in the morning, and they spend their entire day searching out food sources. The cycle of life that we see in mammoth, the sows and cubs, the lessers, uh, come in the very first in the spring for the food sources that are available in town. They're welcome in mammoth, as long as they don't forget their bears. We're about 200 yards from my house, so uh, one of my favorite places in town. And uh, the bears uh, come here and, and uh, hang out. They have everything they need, safety, um, food, water, and habitat. Natural food is good. Human food is bad. It's especially important to keep mothers, called sows, away from people food. Get out of there. Hey, get out of there, you naughty bear. None of that. Sows teach their cubs how to eat and how to forage in a very peculiar way. The sow will eat an item, and then at the same time, the cub is watching what the sow is eating. The cub will come over to the sow and will sniff her breath. And since they have such an immense sense of smell, that registers in their brain in the memory banks that whatever mom just ate must be good food. And they'll recall on that memory at a later date and time to identify whether something's food or not. If a cub's memory banks register people food as good, it won't know how to find natural food and won't know how to teach its own cubs down the line. The longer we work with them and keep them alive, the smarter they get and the more learned they are about the ways of man, stay out of traffic, stay out of cabins, stay out of garages, stay out of cars. But each year, there are some bears who just don't get it. Every morning, Steve checks on the bears in town to make sure they're OK. Today, he is one step behind a young sow and her cub. Hello. Hi, good girl. And knowing the topography and geography of the area and where the roads lie, I could see that the bears were going to cross Lake Mary Road. And so I went up there and um, uh, waited for them so that they could maybe uh, cross a little bit safer. Cars do get going pretty fast right there. Here we go. Here we go. As far as doing traffic control for my bears, um, 
It happens, you know, on a regular basis. I wish I could be there every time a bear crosses the road. She's right here, right on top. 99% of the time, they cross safely. The other times, it's uh, most of the often fatal. It's all right. It's all right. There you go. Go get your baby. There you go. There you go. Pick her up. Let's go. Come on. But the sow doesn't bring the cub back with her. Something's caught her attention. Where are you going? She was absolutely going somewhere. She wasn't fooling around. You could really see she had her nose up in the air and uh, w was, you know, on a mission. 20 minutes later. All right, so you're in nine. The bears are at five. I'll be in route right now. Thank you very much for calling. Steve finds out exactly where the two were headed. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one, mono one. Can you show me code four, 10 six, lower falls tract? Code four, 10 six, lower falls tract. The sow and cub uh, were just trying to break into a cabin, and so we're going to respond up here and see if it's so that she's trying to bust in would be a bad, bad thing. Hi. Good. How are you, sir? And you saw the bears? Oh, yeah. It was a, a mama and a very young cub. These old cabins up here, you know, close to 100 years old, they were built as uh, fishing homes. They're all single pane windows. They're easy to break into. It's kind of a target rich environment. Hello? Did I see by the sow's body posturing and her nose in the air that she was on her way to commit a misdemeanor? Did I know she was going to break up a door jam today? Uh, no, I'm not that good. For now, there's not much Steve can do. The bears have left the area. I need to catch them red-handed, and anything five minutes or longer after the act, I, I'll just pass on it. The bear won't have a clue what's going on, and I, I don't roll that way. Steve will work with a bear for any number of reasons. Get out of there! He uses non-lethal techniques to keep them away from crowds. You bad bear! to move them out of dangerous areas, and to let them know where they can and cannot search for food. Get out of there, you bad bear. I have dozens of tools at my disposal, everything from doing nothing and observing uh, through pepper spray, pyrotechnics, flashbang devices, audio devices, things that smell, things that whistle impact devices, rubber bullets. Every situation's different, and my job is to do the very best thing I can for the people and the bears. All right, fine. 34, 25. Copy that, thank you. Less than 24 hours after the sow and cubs attempted break-in, there's another bear report. This time, the bear got in. I have no tolerance for busting up homes. It really pisses me off when bears uh, do this. Did you folks just get here? We just got here. I saw glass. I looked at the window, it was broken. I'm like, that's odd. I thought we were robbed. The kitchen is completely trashed. Food everywhere, the, the refrigerator open, banged up, soda cans, things I didn't even know what they were, ripped open. Tons of bite marks. You, know, you can see the slobber from the bear, and so you can pretty much estimate, you know, just from my height, the height of the bear on this single pane window. It's a front paw print and a rear paw print. It's going to be an adult bear with this set right here. And if you look, um, the bear came in and out more than once. And uh, unfortunately, I'm guessing that's a uh, cub print right oh, there. 97, a frame like A bear bringing her cub into this house. That's just terrible. The bear was in here more than once. Stealing is a bad thing. Mothers teach their bears, and teaching them how to break into homes will just lead to them getting killed. So you think they smell 
and not saw, they smelled something. Their sense of smell is miles and miles, not just hundreds of yards. And they know whether there's pizza in the fridge or whatever. They're very, very uh, strong power of smell. Your nose is just to hold your glasses on. It doesn't even work in comparison to a bear. Wow. So should I be Maybe worried about the bacon box. in my car right now? The bacon's got to come out the of the car right car. now. Yeah, uh-huh. Bear break-ins in Mammoth are rare. But last year, a bear named Blondie changed everything. Blondie was responsible for 51 different entries of homes in about a half a square mile. It was expensive homes, lower end homes, cabins, never a tent, never a trash can. She knew uh, to walk right to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator and the freezer and help herself. Blondie caused so much property damage, she became headline news. Authorities had no choice. They issued a shoot-to-kill permit. I never, ever saw that bear for the entire rest of the year, and it was just uh, an incredible thing that the bear just disappeared off the map, never seen again. Mono 1, Wallace 1, 97. Now it looks like another bear with a cub is picking up where Blondie left off. Same patterns, same locations. A uh, woman's home alone. Tim for a copy. A half mile from the last break-in, the sow and cub are trying to get into another home. This time, the house is occupied. Hello? Are you all right, ma'am? Where are they at? There's nothing out here. No, ma'am. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. All Let's right. Get through a window out there. All right. Bears should not be pulling on anybody's window, uh, especially an occupied home. I take it very seriously in order to get a bear shot. I wish I got here sooner, and uh, I would have dealt with it right then. And um, we're just a few minutes behind the call. It was on the ground, and it was facing you, and it was biting on your window. And the baby was right in between all those little trees there. All right, thank you very, very much. Mono one, wildlife one. I'm going to um, be 98 from the call, report taken. Uh, the bears are UTL, but I'll be tr patrolling the area for the next hour or so. Within a half hour, Steve gets the tip he's been hoping for. We had a call from one of my uh, neighbors out here and let us know that the sow and cub was lurking around again. And if I can catch her red-handed, it'd be just great. Straight up this way? Yeah, right up the hill. I think we're hot on her trail. And again, no offense to her, but uh, she has been acting up a little bit. And done correctly, aversive conditioning can change her habits for life. Copy, so... There you go. Steve stays a short distance away from the bears, hoping to catch them attempting another break-in. But then... <laughs> neighborhood dogs frighten the bears. The sow runs one way, the cub heads up the nearest tree. With the sow and cub separated, Steve shifts his efforts from punishing the bear to reuniting her with her cub. We've got three dogs on the bear right now. We got a baby cub right here at 10 feet. She can't leave the cub here. Could keep your dogs with you. Yeah, yeah she, oh, he's just good. right behind us, a little okay. eight pounder. Yeah. We have to hook him back up. She can hear you. She's on her way. Here she comes. All right. All right. 
Hurry up. It's all right. Come get that cub. Go ahead. Call her down. You're all right. Go home. Go on. Now. Go home. Go home. Go home. Let's go. Good dogs. Go home. Go on. Go on. Get. We almost had it down and uh, reunite these guys. Those dogs just got loose again, which kind of irks me. But um, good dogs just, uh, you know, charging after the bear, and that's what dogs do. Finally, after 40 minutes, Here she comes. Come over to the south town. Here's the baby coming down. There you go. Come on. You're all right. You're okay. You're all right. The sow and cub reached the ground, but there's still a lesson to be learned. She was walking away at a slow speed instead of running away. Bears need to learn to be afraid of people. That's my job sometimes, is to professionally be mean to bears. Get out of here. Go on, get. Steve shoots at the sow, not the cub. Go on, get out of here. Go on. I lit her up and uh, gave her uh, a rubber ball on the ass. One on one, wildlife one. I just fired two different rounds on this sow out on uh, Woodman Street. Uh, we're code four. Uh, just FYI, to get somebody calling in. They are non-lethal uh, rubber rounds, light fields, and um, they're. Uh, they work just great. It's a soft rubber, and um, just reach out and tap her and let her know she's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't be walking around midday checking windows. We'll treat you like any other perpetrator in our town. Steve measures his success with the bears by their actions. 24 hours after shooting rubber bullets at the sow and cub, they're staying away from homes and eating their natural food in the forest. It looks like the aversive conditioning is working. Wow, I mean, this is what it's all about uh, when we get them to practice more of this behavior and less human action uh, behavior. My job is uh, the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. In the quiet of the forest, Steve gets his first close-up look at the sow. These young bears are difficult to identify sometimes with them shutting out and changing colors. This one's a two-tone bear. A little bit unusual. It's three and a half year old female. She came out of hibernation with two cubs. One died right away early in the spring, and then she was left with one cub. She entered at least three different homes while she had her cub. One of the really odd things is that the homes are all being vandalized in the daytime. Steve begins to piece together everything he knows about this bear. It all seems eerily familiar. The size makes sense. Her age makes sense. Every single thing indicates that it's the bear who entered all the homes. Last year, Wandy. That she could be alive and wreak havoc, that just gave me shivers up my spine. Dark head dark legs, blonde uh, straps and back, blonde highlights. That hasn't changed much other than the blonde continues to darken, but uh, those same basic uh, color patterns, same age, same sex, same homes that are being broken into. Blondie never went in a single home at night. She only went in homes in the daytime, which made it even more offensive. 
When Blondie first appeared, she was an orphan cub who had to learn how to survive on her own. A bear's been staying out of trouble. It did enter this home last week through an open window. That's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I'm sorry, buddy. Feeling good, huh? The bear just got in the habit of going into houses that were open, all soft entries, open sliding glass doors, open windows, and it would go straight to the fridge, right past the trash can, and uh, help itself to uh, ice cream or fine cheeses. Guava was a favorite. People weren't afraid of it. Uh, they didn't report uh, what she was doing, and uh, they would just shoo her out of the house. Go on, you cute bear, and keep the cookies. And so it went unchecked and unreported dozens of times. What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. It was just a really, really bad example of loving on bears too much. People just went out of their way to protect her. The bear came out of den last year and proceeded to enter homes. Again, they were all soft entries in a half a square mile. 51 times it entered homes. Go on, get out of here. I just could not put a stop to it. Uh, rubber bullets, flashbang, pyrotechnics, the food reward, and the people doting over that bear outweighed me being mean to the bear. The bears left the area. But there was another issue hampering Steve's efforts to teach Blondie, Mammoth Lakes Borders Federal Forest Land. Steve's area of responsibility is within the four square miles of our town, where Steve can use all of his techniques and efforts to dissuade bears and try and change their behavior patterns. When Blondie raided homes outside Steve's jurisdiction, he was powerless to stop the behavior. Really, it was quite evident that Blondie was going to push the envelope until somebody had to shoot her. A shoot-to-kill permit was issued for Blondie. But then, as if the bear could sense it, Blondie disappeared, and the shoot-to-kill permit expired. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, trying to locate her or her carcass, and uh, was unsuccessful was really odd, but the bear never showed up again. Until now. And though she's broken into three cabins, Steve doesn't punish her. For the moment, she's not breaking any of the rules. We reward our bears by silence and privacy for doing the right thing. It looks like she wants to um, suckle and uh, feed her cub. And so we're just about to back out of here and uh, we'll leave her alone. But she's being a good bear and it's great to see. For three days, there are no reports of Blondie and her cub. Marty, a copy, Wallace one. Hello, Tom, one one. I was on patrol in the car in front of me. Came to an abrupt stop, so I stopped to see what the problem was. You could tell he was rattled. I walked up to the car. He wouldn't even roll the window down at first. Then he cracked it and told me that a car coming the opposite way up towards Lake Mary had just missed the mom bear and hit a cub right in front of him. Marty, how long have you been here? Just about five minutes. I, I just missed it. Uh-huh. Uh, the little cub got rolled behind its mom. The mom is presumably on scene. It was dragging the bear off the road. And uh, not good at all, but we'll see if we can help a little bit. I can hear the sow and hear the cub. She's absolutely on scene, Marty. You got lethal on you? Yes. Yeah. The bear was moving like 20 feet each way. You can hear it go down a little bit, come up the hill a little bit. You know, it was moving around like it was pacing back and forth, you know? Sounds like about where that pine is right there. That's what I'm thinking too, Marty. You're right on top of it. We got out spotlights and started looking right off the roadway for the bear. It was right within five feet of us. She's yeah, down to my left now. Ah. Right here, Marty. Ah. Oh. That's your sow. All right, good girl. All right, she's got it. Hello, good bear. 
the Cubs. She's looking to her right. The Cubs to her right. Hello, good girl. Oh, f Is she coming towards us or is she going down? No, she's probably trying to revive them. OK, OK. This is a really steep slope right here. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. OK, f me. Where we can't work through this brush, that bear can come through here faster than the fastest human on Earth. You need to be careful when you're dealing with an uh, injured bear. Uh, the cub is, you know, is all right. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. I don't hear the cub. I'm guessing it's 1144. Oh. Oh, boy. Son of a bitch. The cub died while we were there, and we could hear its vocalization stop. sound like that before i can't say what she's thinking i could only hear her wailing in grief oh girl oh i wish i could help the thing more you have a really really anxious sow that's just lost her young and for the safety of everyone involved we're going to lay back off this scene I share in her grief. I've seen it go on for, you know, done filming guys I didn't sleep at all and the thoughts that went through my mind and the images I replayed it a few times last night I have personal experience of people losing their children it will ruin the rest of your life. All of this has been trampled down, and uh, obviously, uh, the bear went through here. 51% of all black bears die before they're 18 months old. It is something that bears have to deal with all the time. I don't see any blood or hair or the body of the young bear, and uh, kind of happy for that. Uh, she must have dealt with it in her own way. And um, <clears throat> we won't have to do any body recovery today. I see some of the most beautiful things, you know, that anyone could ever imagine. And I also see some of the most horrendous. And it can happen an hour apart. You know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and some days suck. Blondie disappears. Steve is now monitoring the big bears who have come into town and taken over the prime feeding areas. 
Like the bear who's made a local golf course his home. Steve calls him Half Bib. Well, we call him that because of the big blaze on his chest. It looks like a bib. Uh, he comes out about this time every evening and uh, enjoys the cool grass. Uh, have a poop and a pee and a little bit of food and water. He's a no harm, no foul bear. He's never caused any problems in Mammoth. I can't document a single 911 call that we were on with that bear. You can set your clock by his habits, and his habits are all good habits. And uh, we'll give him all the room he needs. In the summer, um, he does try to hold space in some of the most prime habitat. And uh, in this case, he can hold his own um, in the golf course and makes a good living there on the grass, the flowers, uh, the wasps, the insects, the larvae. It's just a, a really rich place for food. He's not so nervous around people, but other bears, and so his nose is constantly working, uh, making sure that there's not other male dominant bears in the area. Tonight, there's not, and so he's got the place to himself. Um, big guy, um, big guy. He isn't uh, habituated, but does he know the ways of man, the traffic patterns, what time the bars close? Uh, he sure does. And uh, he's uh, a great example of the bears that we want to keep alive in Mammoth. But not all bears play by the rules of Mammoth Lakes. There's a bear in a cabin up at Twin Lakes, uh, cabin number four. Here's the entry spot. And the bear went in and out a couple of times. And then just before you got here, headed up the back trail. It's kind of ripped the side off and looks like it hopped on the bed and went in. Bear was in here for a while. Can you see the blonde colored hair? Could you describe him for me? It's not a big, big, super mature looking bear to me, but it's not a little guy either. She has some pictures here, Steve. You could, you could scroll through. Oh, no. This is Blondie. 44, 15, 44, 11. Three weeks after Blondie's cub was killed by a car, the bear is out of control. He came right to our window. Raiding multiple houses daily. I looked up. And there it was, by that big tree, just looking at just the cabin. Right, I said, there you, he huh? is. And, and we know that bear. It's that young bear that the baby was killed. After her cub was killed, she had more free time and uh, started a new rash of burglaries. A cub in tow is a restraint. Uh, she doesn't have that restraint anymore. Blondie's now able to travel faster and farther. She moves outside of town back to land controlled by the federal government, the same area where she caused so much damage a year before. Steve is powerless to do anything. It's beyond his jurisdiction. I was ordered to stand down in those areas with any type of tool that I might use on a bear. Copy that, we'll be documenting, I guess. A letter was served to the city council, the police department, and to myself stating that I was not welcome to work with bears, uh, lethal or non-lethal, anywhere in those tracks of cabins. But Steve isn't prohibited from being there, and he wants to monitor the situation. Look at every one of these has got bear prints all over them from the same bear trying to push it in. This is the fifth one on the block I know of. Not cool. Six more cabins are broken into. The owner of the lodge at Twin Lakes, he's had uh, eight or nine entries with dogs in the house, with people in the house. This is uh, happening, you know, every day now. The scene is so typical, you know, cupboards opened, refrigerator opened, all the, the good sweet food gone. I think we're up to 17 or 18 cabins now up in the Lakes Basin in probably uh, three quarters of a square mile. They get pretty aggressive and pretty confident once they succeed. It was not easy to uh, shoo it away. And usually, I can shoo them. And now, 
I just feel we're all in jeopardy. We love the bears, and um, we hate to see anything bad happen to them, but my view is you do everything you can, and if there's nothing else you can do, then sometimes you have to get rid of it. What it did to our community, what it did to me, what it did to the reputation of the town, it was all just shattering. People were just horrified both ways. The people that wanted the bear killed, the people that didn't want the bear killed, the people that are in the middle of the road, the politicians. It was just absolutely insane. The bear comes up, pulls off the shutters, breaks in windows, breaks in doors, throws things everywhere. Don't be discouraged from picking up the phone. And... Yeah, but your police cannot anything no. to get rid of the bear. If the bear breaks into that cabin and I'm in there and I shoot that bear, what happens? Do I have that right to actually use a firearm in my home? It's probably too late to save her now and something needs to be worked out because we're here leaving our cabins up there vulnerable to that bear still. We have done everything that we know and still right now we have a road bear. Could the bear bowl somebody over escaping from a residence on um, that part was very very possible as hard as it is i need to, to admit defeat with that bear to destroy a bear law enforcement needs what's called a depredation permit we had a summer home owner get a depredation permit from the california department of fish and game which is a process that allows a homeowner to either remove themselves or contract with someone to remove a nuisance animal. She usually um, went in places that weren't occupied and that were shuttered up, and she would just tear the shutters off, push in the windows. And that's what made her such a dangerous bear, because there was no protection. I mean, if you can't, if your shuttered cabin doesn't protect you from a bear, then you have no defense. Steve wants to be the one to take the shot. I have gone public asking permission uh, to take the life of this young bear. I have a, a huge connection with this particular bear. Uh, I've spent countless hours uh, dealing with this. If you're not prepared to remove a certain bear out of the population, then you shouldn't be in this line of work. But the permit is for property outside of Mammoth City limits. That bear is in a jurisdictional mess and is on the other side of an imaginary line that the Forest Service owns that property and it's not within the four square miles of town proper, then I'm not allowed to do my work. And um, boy, am I pissed off. By law, the destruction of the bear falls to federal government trappers who will capture and euthanize her. Relocation is against California Fish and Game policy. We have multiple tools at our disposal that we can use in order to capture a wild bear. We have culvert traps or large cage traps that will put some type of a bait inside, usually a, a, a food source that bears are accustomed to. It, when the bear crawls into the culvert and grabs that bait, it releases the, the doors and they slam shut and then they lock, and then that bear is trapped inside the culvert trap. And, uh, you know, typically they're euthanized with a firearm. Bears being shot in the head in live traps bothers me, and especially when it could be prevented. Whatever happens, we should be responsible for ourselves and for our bears. Well, that's why it says don't feed our bears instead of don't feed the bears, because they're not somebody else's bears. They're our bears, and you ought to be responsible for them, good or bad. That night, the traps are set. Blondie never shows. A bear is not a nocturnal bear. It only does daytime burglaries. As every day passes, destroying her becomes a hotter issue for the community that loves its bears. It's not black and white. There is no books written about this or laws written about this. It's to good judgment. We're all here to serve the public. And what would the public want? What would mom and dad and the normal, everyday people that aren't on scene, what would they be saying to do? Shoot. Shoot. 
Steve can't do anything to save Blondie. The most he can do is help find her and make sure authorities get the right bear. When I pulled in there, I could see that one of the cabins that was broken into last week, that the windows had been repaired. Uh, all the shutters had been torn off, the screens had torn off, the window was covered with her prints. David 1, Wildlife 1. Wildlife 1, 4410. Yeah, it's breaking into another cabin now. I'm just going to confirm with you. We got the go-ahead. We're good to go. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have the piece of paper. The folks who own the summer homes up here, their personal safety is my responsibility. I have to do the right thing by them. And that meant um, that this bear needed to be killed. Blondie has become a public safety hazard. The bear continues her rampage. But it's daytime, and the feds aren't present. Now it falls to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department to destroy her. Know where he is. Steve. I'm behind the Olson cabin. We're probably 300 yards up from where my truck is. The more of us that are moving through here, the more noise we're going to make. So, you everybody just kind of slow down and be conscious of that. My thoughts were um, to make it clean, uh, to make it safe, and to just get the problem solved. The bear was probably full from eating and was laying down at the base of a tree. I stayed eyes on the bear. Uh, they got locked and loaded. We're OK. Take your time. Take your time, Karen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Shot, yes? Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, everybody stand down. Okay, I need to talk. I was sorry that we'd gotten to the point with this animal. It's just, we have such a unique environment up here. We certainly, as human beings, have a responsibility in that, in that we allowed the animals to get to the point where they started to look for human food instead of their own. I've got a vested interest in it. My cabin's been broken into three times in the last three weeks. Okay. I, I, yes, I understand Did that. Did you get him? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. And she's actually a she. And yes, sir. Is that the one? That's the one. We're really happy that uh, the authorities came here and took care of this guy. It's too bad, but it's it's tough. You know, they can be smart about those. 
Yeah. Um, or she might have, it might have taken her a day to go in, but, you know. California Department of Fish and Game wildlife biologists will take the carcass. They're responsible for disposing of the body. For the time being, I've taken possession of a bear. Maybe uh, collect our thoughts uh, before we turn the bear over to be put in the landfill. None of this had to happen this way. It's. Uh, I'm not a religious man, but I think I'm a spiritual man, and um, the Native Americans taught me to follow their lead and make an offering to this guy, help this guy along a little bit best we can. One one, wildlife one. Wildlife one. Can you show me 98 from the Lakes Basin? No, sorry. 